You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Mob Wives After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Mob Wives After Show. We're back! Balls! Hey guys, welcome back to Mob Wives New Blood. It is season four, episode two. Sorry that we weren't here for episode one. Um, of course, because Mob Wives do whatever the hell they want, they decided to push up their premiere earlier. Anyway, though, tonight we're talking about Caught on Tape. I'm your host, Roxy Stryer, alongside Gabby Loren. What's up, guys? Glad to be here back with the Rocks. And we are the balls. We are the matzo balls we back are the in the studio. Balls. We have not done a show together. In a while. I was saying it's probably been a year. And that's just a shame. So I'm glad it's that we're sad. back on the show. And your schedule last year, you couldn't do the show, but you love it. So yeah. you're here to talk to us well, about it. Now it's late enough that we could actually commit. And of course, we have <laughs> Phil Speedtech in the booth helping us out. Thank you, Phil. And what is this song? It's reunited and feels so good. Oh, it is cute. <laughs> Okay, anyway, because I know you guys didn't come here to listen to us talk about being matzo balls and you actually want to talk about the show, let's jump right into it. To me, this seems like it is going to be a season of fun and hecticness. What about you? What kind of vibe are you getting from season four? New blood. You know what? I love this show. I think whoever actually came up with the idea for it is a genius. And also should be arrested, but genius. Yeah, probably related to the mob, but <laughs> <laughs> it's just so awesome to see these girls in these raw situations with families that are involved in organized crime. Like, I'm not condoning organized crime, but it's really interesting to see what these people are going through actually in the current moment. Right. Did you like, feel it's happening like now? Are you liking the concept of the new blood coming on or are you kind of missing love and Karen right now? Or, I mean, mm. just we have these new characters. We have Natalie. We have Alicia. We're meeting their their boyfriends and their people, their brothers. So uh, we're getting definitely a lot of new situations. How are you feeling about that? You know what? I think they kept the best characters on the roster and let go of the two weakest. So I'm cool with it. And they're smart by letting those two go and bringing in new people because it's keeping the show fresh and I think it will last longer in the long run. Right. I mean, because in the moment, I love seeing these fist fights. They get me pumped and going. But actually, yeah. in terms of longevity and storyline, we're falling a little flat. So I I'm, I'm happy to see that we have all these new storylines, storylines that we haven't touched upon yet, right. and that, of course, we're going to talk about in tonight's episode. So let's get into it and talk about Drita with this stalker situation. I mean, I've never personally had to deal with a stalker. Have you? Um, Some people on, like, social media, but it's never gotten, like, physical or anything I've had to deal with in person. Right. So I would nice. imagine as a, I mean, now she's a celebrity. And this is something we used to talk about when we covered Jersey Shore, how we always wanted them to let down the fourth wall and have us see what their actual lives are like. And this show is doing that for us by showing us that Drita, who is now famous because of the show, mm -hmm. has a stalker. Yeah, and you know what? I I like that they showed who the stalker was but blurred the face because to me it said more of like this isn't just a story that we're writing into the show. Right, this is raw and real. If it had been, as you were pointing out, if it had been an actor and they had just thrown him in there, then he would have wanted to see Right. It. And also it seems like the stalker is even crazier because the stalker isn't looking for camera time. They're looking for Drita time. Yeah, that was real. He, I mean, he literally ran away as soon as she came out the door. I can't believe she didn't run after him. Thank God. Well, she's she's crazy, but I don't know if she's that crazy. <laughs> but my question, I mean, I know she hired this alarm guy, but after the first episode where we see Drita and she has her daughter who's getting bullied and we met both of Drita's daughters and we love them and they're so cute and we, and we feel for them and... They're getting bullied. One of them's getting bullied in school, and Drita is nervous about it. But she calls Lee, and she's like, "Listen, Lee, one of our daughters is getting bullied, and she actually got pushed." And Lee is like, "Oh my God, she should punch him in the face! Like violence! I'm gonna kill that person!" Like so pissed off about it. And we know that Lee has anger issues. Yeah. Drita has her own anger issues, but Lee has serious anger issues. 
why would Dorita call Lee and tell him about the stalker? Like, very well knowing that Lee would kill him. I think these people just feed off the drama and she calls him to get a rise out of the situation. I really believe that's all it is because he's not coming down there right at the moment. The guy wasn't there when she called him. But she's just trying to, like, I don't know, give it that extra oomph to make him, I don't know, maybe it's their only connection because they're are they still together now? Yeah, they're back together they because okay. uh, she decided to give him another chance because yeah. they have these two kids together. Well, they have kids together and they're family and it's her. Are they living husband. together right now though? I know that he was in the halfway house. I think yeah. now, I and we know that he refuses to be seen on TV, which is why we haven't seen him at all. Right. I'm not exactly sure of their living situation. Maybe you guys at home know um, and are doing research on what these people's lives are like and as we, are we and we want to know what you guys know so of course as always on itunes you can find us rate subscribe comment and on youtube let us know or of course you can always call in this is studio c so we have a different phone number phil can you hit us with that phone number for studio c 424-256-1633 we haven't done it in a while i think we should get some callers so if anyone's watching yeah. Right now, call feel in free, at some point in the show. Feel free to call in this yeah. week or any week. Or, again, if you're a little camera shy, voice shy, <laughs> definitely contact us through um, the computer. And we want to hear what you guys have to say. And we want to talk, answer questions, or ask our own questions. So, anyway, Drita seems to think that she scared the stalker off. I'm not convinced. Is this the last we're seeing of Stalker Man? I don't think it's the last we're seeing, but I definitely think he was scared. And I love her little line, how she said, you know, when one crazy person meets another crazy person, they know not to pretty much mess with each other. It's kind of true, but I, what was the point? Why do you think he was there then if he didn't want to speak to her? She she went up to him and was like, what's up? Well, it's weird because I thought she said that he only goes to the store when she's not there right. up until that point. So that was a little confusing to me. But I think the overall reason why he's talking in the store is because it's attached to her. Right. So I felt like when she approached him, maybe he just got shy and nervous. But I felt like that's what he'd been waiting for. We don't know how often she actually goes into the store. But we do know that I think it's Taylor was the person who was working there, her employee. Um said to her, yeah, he comes in, but he asks he asks for you, about you. So I assumed when she said he's only there when she's not there, what she meant was she hadn't happened to be there yet when yeah, he was there. Yeah, for, yeah, I guess coincidentally. Coincidentally, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's also strange that this guy just walks in and can get behind the counter and look at the money and whatever they're doing back behind the cash register. Like, that's creepy because this dude could steal your shit. Not only that, but... He has, they're putting cameras on to try to stop him. The yeah. camera's not going to stop you from getting all of your money stolen. No. I mean, yes, you can see who it is, but they already perfectly described him. They know what he looks like. I don't really know what I mean, what other cameras know. do they need? They're filming a reality show. I know. <laughs> they literally. already have, like, HD quality footage, but you need, like, surveillance cameras. For right. Them. Just because they blurred it out for us doesn't mean it's blurred out in the footage. They know what this guy looks yeah, like. Yeah, exactly. So that's pretty much the entire stalker storyline of this episode. I, again, am not convinced that we've seen the last of him, but we'll just have to wait for the rest of the season to see. Yeah, I want to see more of a confrontation between the stalker and Dorita. I want to see them get into it because she tried to talk to him and he didn't want to talk he just ran he got nervous he was a little shy guy yeah he got starstruck that's <laughs> that's definitely what it was let's talk about one of our new bloods yeah natalie she's causing all the problems right now it seems well actually both the new bloods are causing problems but yeah. natalie's causing the big issue uh last week's episode we didn't get to talk about it so let's break it down a little bit basically natalie goes out to a lunch with angela and rita and it's because Angela and Drita want to meet the new face of Mob Candy. It's really nice. As friends, you know, they want to meet. They want to talk. Right. I'm sure the reality show didn't hate the fact that they were all getting together. They probably pushed it a little bit. But anyway, they get together. I thought it was a little weird that Renee wasn't there, but fine. They meet Natalie, and within minutes, Natalie's taking shots, and she's like, can I have lemoncella? Can I have a goose with uh, cranberry? Can I have this? You know, she's drinking. She's schmoozing. That's fine. If you want to drink with your lunch okay i'm not again i'm not one to judge i've had a drink with my lunch before too but afterwards and it could have been editing it could have been the footage they were chopping the other pieces where she was talking about things that it's just i couldn't even follow in a complete sentence she was she kept saying you know what i mean and 
it was like, no, I have no idea what you are talking about. So it was this really weird situation that you guys watched. And then, of course, it left a bad taste in Angela and Drita's mouth. So at the party, that later on, they go to the uh, fashion show, and they kind of, not that we're talking crap, but they said, she was nuts, and Drita says, no, she was drunk. Now, I want to ask you a question. Do we think being called drunk is an insult? No, I... I mean, like Drita put it, she just, and you said in the screen room, it's a, it's stating a fact, like that was what the situation was, and it's better to be called a drunk than a wacko, right? Yeah, that's what she, she said, it's better to be called drunk than, I think she said jackass or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Whatever I mean, it was. I mean, I would rather somebody blame, be like, oh, she was being weird. But because, because she, she drunk, drank. As opposed yeah. to saying she just is weird, you know what I mean? Yeah, because then you have a personality issue as opposed to you just went crazy one night. Right, and I don't know. I'm I'm a little nervous. I don't know what kind of recon was done on Natalie in terms of her being the face of Mob Candy. It seemed very quick to me, you know. Uh, there, Renee is looking for a face, and all of a sudden, Alicia is like, oh, I have one for you, and then we see Natalie come in, and Natalie gets the job. She, she looks great. She looks yeah, great in the clothes. Funny. It reps her brand well. But as we discuss in tonight's episode... Angela and Drita are getting their nails done and they talk about how they're a little nervous because Renee keeps saying Natalie's a mini me and somebody who's a recovering drug addict. Do you really want to be around you 10 years ago? No, you know what I mean, because then she could revert back to her old ways, which is why the girls are worried about her. Of course, because of her real friends now selfishly and just pretending for a minute that I don't actually care about these people, which, honestly, I do. I do seem to care about mm -hmm. them. I know it's a TV show, but I really do. I'm sure that the viewers would like to see some sort of, like, crazy disaster go on, but you have to think that this is their actual lives, and Angela and Drita are really concerned about Renee. Of but course. I do have to say, though, if you're a recovering addict, it doesn't matter if... I mean, this girl's young, so she's living it up, but... They go out and drink regardless of this girl being brought into the picture. So she could revert. I mean, if you're an addict recovering, you shouldn't even be in that environment in the first place. So regardless of whether it's with a 20-something-year-old or a 30-something-year-old or a 50-year-old, you're still in the environment. It's not going to change a thing. I kind of think there's something going on that we don't know about that they don't want to air on TV. But we know that Renee was very much so addicted to pills. We know that. So is this other girl, Natalie, addicted to pills? Yeah, I think that it's less of an alcohol issue, although they are masking it with that. And there is an al there. I'm not saying there's an alcohol issue because we don't know her. Pills, yeah. But I know that she drinks. I don't know if she drinks too much because, again, we haven't seen enough. But she drinks. And I think that there might be. This is just, I haven't heard anything, whatever. This is just the way my mind works. Yeah. I'm speculating right. that there's a pill problem or some sort of party problem. Maybe whatever drug it is, any sort of party drug. Because... Otherwise, Drita drinks and Ange drinks, so I don't think they would be so concerned about Renee being around somebody who drinks as they are as concerned yeah. about that as they would be with her being around somebody who just is a party girl. Which I could totally see because at her age, you know, a lot of people are into that scene. And not only that, but she keeps having to prove herself with the I'm um, from the South Philly, whatever, whatever thing. And I feel like she's trying to come off as she's this hard, you know, bitch. And... I, I mean, to me, it comes off as, yeah, she's probably involved with drugs, et cetera, et cetera, if she grew up in a ratchet neighborhood. Who knows? I mean, she said it multiple times. And this is, again, if you guys at home know what she's talking about, I'd really love to hear from you. She said multiple times, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm from South Philly. No, I don't know. Honest to God, I, I don't know what that means. Like, when you say I'm from Staten Island, I know what that means. Uh, I know what the stereotype about that. I know that you're bad at whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, there's a stereotype I, on that. I that don't know. know what the stigma stereotype, ver whatever it is. I don't know what being from South Philly means. You know, like there. Right. I'm not saying that she has to fit that mold, but she keeps putting herself in that mold. And I don't even know what that mold is. Yeah, but you know what? I think I'm just passing judgment on the way and the context she's putting it in. However, like Roxy's saying, since we aren't familiar with that area, I mean, we're East Coast, but we don't we don't know Philly. Yeah, I don't so really know Philly. So if, if you guys at home know, comment on our YouTube or iTunes and let us know what that area is like. And my other question about Natalie is when you, you just mentioned people her age are into this, one of the things she was talking about when she was rambling at the dinner, at the lunch last week is, I don't know, I think she has a kid. 
she was like, and my kid, and my, and he won't pay child support, and my ex, and this kid's a rat, and my ex-husband, my ex-boyfriend, like, so she was randomly talking about her ex-relationships, I couldn't keep it straight, and I don't know, so I'm curious, how old is she actually, and what, really, how does she know Alicia, because Alicia's the one who brought her in, and I know that Alicia has these different boutiques, but how does Natalie fit into that picture? I know Natalie's a model, but she said she had done some stuff before, but not too much stuff. And I'm just wondering how this all works in. I know we have a reality show here. I know that they had to pick people for it, but I'm curious if these relationships are real or if they're, it's a little bit of a stretch or how far back they actually go. Yeah, I'm actually surprised at how like nice Renee is being to this new girl in the face of her company because... She just taking her in, even when there was an issue between her and Drita and Ann, she still kind of listened and mediated, which was surprising. She didn't, like, pick a side. Yeah, because at this point, you know, it's very hard. You can't go against your best friends that have been your best friends, but you also can't go against the face of your company. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, but like, faces business. can be replaced, no? I don't know what that contract looks like, Yeah, but... I I just think that you would do a little bit more. I mean, I don't know how much research she actually did. What we were shown was very little. So I just would think she would do a little more recon, maybe have her friends get lunch with this girl before she hired her or something. Yeah, make this sure girl just made out. Her. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Out. This girl's stoked. But what was actually very interesting is when finally, after they go to lunch and there's that issue between Natalie and Drita, and she's like, yo, if you have something to say in the most typical fashion with two cat fight, like a, two girls fighting a cat fight, if you have something to say, say it to my face. And she's like, I will say it to your face. I do say it to your face. You know what I mean? And one of those just like too hard to watch. Oh my God, you girls are like, it's just crazy how catty this is right now. I get it. If you, if you have something you want to say, Say it to me. Like, I understand. I've heard that a million yeah, times. Yeah, especially in this show, we've heard it a million right. times. Right, I've heard it over and over again. But what was interesting to me, the the most interesting part about this was afterwards, once Renee goes to South Philly to talk to Natalie about what happened when she went to speak to Ange and Drita, she sits down, Natalie, she explains the situation. At first, Natalie seems like she has her guard up, but then Natalie's like, you know what? You're the boss. I'm going to try and I was surprised that she was willing to kind of back down. That's something I didn't expect. Did you think that she was going to be so willing to not apologize, but kind of take a back seat? Or did you think she was going to be all tough guy? You know what? I was expecting what we saw from her because she has that tough front in the beginning, but it's a show. It's a show. You're proving yourself. These girls are always trying to prove themselves. And Renee is the boss. Like, literally and figuratively like she is running that mob candy company she's asked you to be the model respect it plus she is a mob boss like not i mean you know like her whatever her family's involved but i'm saying like she's got years on you and she needs a reality check that girl she's younger do you think that natalie is almost intimidated because not only at this point is renee her boss but she's also a celebrity you know what I mean? She's famous. Yeah, I think deep down, they're all intimidated by one another. You Because think so? they're all bad bitches, you know? And I think even when Renee says, well, don't mess with Drita, like, Drita will, you know, put it down, throw it down. I am curious about that. I know this is such a weird thing to say, but who, who do you believe is the baddest of the bad bitches? <laughs> Of the bad bitches, who would be? No, but you know what I mean? They all are like, I'm the baddest or that Drita. person's bad. You think Drita? Yeah, she has anger issues. I mean, even the way she talks. They all have anger issues. Renee has anger they issues. They definitely do, but I think the other girls control it more than Drita does. Like, Drita gets mad at the, like, smallest things. If someone brings up, like, Natalie's bringing up this problem to her over, you know, drinks and a meal, she just all of a sudden goes on the automatic defense, like, crazy girl mode that she's... She said, like, does she not realize I could just jump over the table like a leopard? Yeah. Like, sh I know they all talk game, but Drita, I feel like, is the one girl that's actually going to get up and flip the table. I don't know. I think Renee would give her a run for her money, and we definitely... Verbally, but maybe not also physically, unless the other girl got up. We. What I was going to say, though... Big Ange, we don't see, she's not, I don't think she's the no. bad, I mean, I love her. I think she's she's a fantastic, doll, but... she's amazing. But we don't know enough about Natalie and Alicia yet to know what they would actually do. 
Um, Natalie seems to think she's very tough, at least, because she's from South Philly, whatever that means. And we also see with Natalie, we meet her boyfriend tonight, London, who is apparently her soulmate. Uh, they're like Bonnie and Clyde is what we get from her. Yeah. Uh, did he say much? I feel like he was very... Un- he really didn't say too much. But I don't think starting your relationship off as Bonnie and Clyde is the way to go. I know. It was just a weird reference to me. And especially <laughs> last week when all she did, she kind of just like talked about her past relationships and how one of her exes was a rat and one of them owed her money and one of them blah, blah, blah. Just kind of like left a sour taste in my mouth like are you one of those girls who bounces from guys to guy and every one of them is the love of your life until they're not and then you hate their guts because like i you know what i mean i just have a problem with that as of now i'm trying not to judge natalie because she keeps telling me not to and i'm to be honest i'm a little scared of her but at the same time i'm not getting the best first impression of her i'd have to agree but like with with any relationship, and I know Drita even mentioned it, you got to give it time for these girls to grow and for us to accept them. That's because true. Because even with us as viewers, like I'm not, I don't like her off the bat right away. I mean, she's not really relatable at first because she's a badass. So it's like she's got to be warmed up to us. Okay. What about our other new blood character, Alicia? Are you feeling like you're warming up to her a little quicker? Or yeah. Yeah. I am because she's more relatable. Her situation's real. The whole thing that's going down with her and Eddie and how she feels like she knew somebody she or she didn't know who she was married to and what she thought was normal was really the complete opposite. All that stuff is so relatable to the everyday woman. I'm actually really liking Alicia and like yeah. you're saying, I feel like I can relate to her more and I feel like one of the reasons I feel this way is because Drita and Big Ange, both who didn't know her, uh, the only one who knew her was Renee. And Drita and Big Ange really like Alicia. So that, yeah. that tells us that there's something about her. Well, plus when they went, when they were in New York on the boardwalk and it was um, Alicia and Drita, they were talking about their situations and what's going on with the guys. I mean, Drita made the reference like, you're really strong. So this girl has like a good head on her shoulders. Like she gets what's going on. She feels betrayed, but... She has a good head on her shoulders. She's not, like, crying and sitting in a corner. Like, she's standing up and, like, dealing with it. But just to clarify, I mean, she pleaded guilty. And she, I, like, these Philly people, their favorite word is allegedly. They keep saying it. They love the allegedly. Yeah, innocent until she's, proven guilty. She says, I pleaded guilty to allegedly fixing the books. Well, honey, you pleaded guilty. But they, you know what, though? This is where it gets hard with law because a lot of lawyers encourage their clients to plead guilty in situations like this because the sentence could be lighter. She actually had a nickname. Oh, I'm going to come in with it next week. They they talked about the first episode that she was called, like, that it was something about being smart because of what she did. And it was better than if she had done the opposite. I don't know. The one thing I'm unsure about Alicia at this point, though, is how much I believe her story. I don't know how much she... I I definitely don't think she knew that her husband was with other women at the time. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. She's like, I knew nothing about his other life. I didn't know he was doing this. I've been accused of fixing the books. I just thought I was doing my job. I thought I was doing everything accurately. That's weird. If they were married for 13 years, I find it a little hard to believe. I agree, because the thing is with mob families, usually the men don't involve their wives... If they do involve their wives in the business part of it, that's for show to the public, it's like usually they know what's going on. You're there. You're a freaking firsthand witness. You know what's weird, though? Um, Just as a side note, segue, because I'm kind of contradicting what I just said, but I know somebody in prison, and he has a wife who has absolutely no idea why he's there. Like, everybody else knows why he's there, and she thinks it's for something completely different. Why is that? Because she's just, like, kind of ignorant to it. Like, she, he told her one thing, and, and she just believed him. Okay, but isn't it public information? It's like a trial goes down, you're, you know, you're convicted of something. Yeah, she just, I don't know. Like, sometimes you just want to hear what you want to hear, yeah. and you just kind of turn, you know, you, you trust your husband, and you just kind of turn a blind eye because... You don't really want to know what's going on. Oh, and talking about the whole relationship thing, what was that quote that was said tonight from the brother-in-law? A lot of guys live double lives and their wives never know. Okay, 
throw up no, that, please. that was her actual brother yeah the brother sorry did so, I say brother? Yeah, yeah so that brother, was alicia's brother. brother turned to her and and his name was anthony said a lot of guys live double lives and their wives never know he said that and it seemed like he was trying to make her feel better I'm sorry. What, that makes was that you words feel of worse. Like, no. What the hell was that? Not only that, but he was, you know, a, or he is a friend of her husband's, and they hang out, and she's questioning what he's doing, and the brother's defending the double live scenario. So, how, like, that's your blood, and how you can't even trust what? Not to throw you under the bus, Gabby, but all I'm saying is they mentioned scores, and before they even decided what oh, it was, I knew what it was. Gabby's well, like, oh, that's a strip club in the city. Yeah, because it's like a huge strip club. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, a lot of celebrities go there and throw down money, like, whatever. All I'm saying it's is, popular. You knew what it was. I don't know if I've been there, but like, I've definitely, I mean, people from my town, like, all the guys, they know what that shit I'm, is. I'm just know. giving you crap. I'm just giving you crap, girl. Okay, scores. but let's talk more about that scene with her brother so basically yeah. alicia's sitting there and she's going through five years of wiretaps yep five years five of wire years taps. the amount of time that must take and she why she's doing it supposedly is to try to find that's how they are going to convict her they say they know she was fixing the books because of the wiretaps so she's looking to he listening to hear what they heard her say that convicted her you know what i mean yeah. So that's that's why she's listening. But on the way, she's finding out a lot of stuff that she never wanted to hear. Right. I would assume, even if you are the best, most loyal, whatever it is, you would still not want somebody listening to your five years worth of conversations, you know? Like, even if I was married for five years, I wouldn't want my husband listening, even if I was absolutely dead loyal, I wouldn't want him listening to every minute of it. It's just like, some of the stuff must be like, embarrassing or we whatever it is you know yeah so even if you were perfect but we find out eddie is far from perfect and he's been talking to people and specifically talking to this one girl carla who we met last week at the party and we find out that she's one of renee's longtime friends um it was weird that we saw her there and i thought it was weird alicia's reaction she like pointed her out and was like guys that's my husband's ex-girlfriend and she said it in like this weird jealous way and, and the girls were like, so? Like, what? what's your point? Yeah. And I knew it was going to come back somehow, otherwise they wouldn't have aired it. And now this week we find out that that happens to be the girl that he was still talking to. Um, we find out they went for Chinese food. Do you think that they were hooking up? How coincidental. Um, They could have been. Maybe Renee doesn't know about it because, oh. I mean, they're friendly, right? But when people hook up, they don't necessarily need to talk about it. It could be done behind closed doors. Yeah, but not then you wouldn't have lunch with people. Here's why my, wouldn't you have lunch with someone you're hooking up with? No, you would have lunch with the person you're hooking up with, but not with them and somebody who didn't know. Well, if you're in a group of friends, it's just the three of them or something. Yeah, but Renee's friends with both of them. She said it's like her big brother. Yeah. Okay. Here's my problem with the situation. Renee says that Eddie is like her big brother and is yeah. her long term friend. They've been they've known each other since high school. So, Eddie is her friend before Alicia is. I that I take that stuff very seriously. Like who, not who my friend first is necessarily, but who your friend is is the person that I think that you oh loyalty to. loyalty. Yeah, yeah, you have loyalty. So I don't have a problem with the fact that if Renee knew that Eddie was doing this and she wasn't close with Alicia, which doesn't seem like she really was, that she didn't tell him her because. I think that it's wrong what Eddie was doing, but I don't think it was Renee's place to say necessarily. But then to play devil's advocate, I mean, he was cheating on his wife. You know, it's not like they're in high Wait, school still. Was so we know that for a fact. No, I, that I'm saying allegedly. I'm saying if if it happened, if yeah. Renee knew, then I, it wasn't. No, it's not her fault. But being a bystander, it's no good. Right. But it's hard when her loyalty lies with Eddie. True. To, but then at this point, it's like she also has a strong relationship with his, like Eddie's wife, Alicia. Yeah, Alicia. Mm -hmm. So that's hard because it doesn't matter. Like, years, great. Like, you can know someone for 10 years and someone for five, but doesn't mean you're going to be closer with the person you've known for 10. Right. And so, I mean, she's obviously definitely close with Alicia as well. I think it's a messed up situation that she went out to lunch with the ex-girlfriend and her friend's husband and 
her friend had no idea and was pregnant because, yeah, very valid point by Alicia. She's pregnant. Your husband should be coming home to you and your kids at that point. Eight months. Like, you have one more month and you're delivering. Yeah, she said. She goes, I don't even care if they hooked up, which I'm sure she does. But I don't even care if they hooked up. He lied to me. He, yeah. on the phone call, said, let's get Chinese food so we can drink our problems away. Like, that doesn't sound... Yeah, what problems are you having besides murdering people? It's like, the the problems you're having is you're che- either cheating on your wife or right. something's going on, you know? And, like... How disrespectful when she's eight months pregnant that you go out and get drunk with another woman. Yeah. Like, I even think this, if you're not sleeping mm-hmm. with her. I, I think it's messed up. The uh, situation's wrong. Yeah, sure. it's really wrong. And at the, even though I just stood up for Renee saying that originally it's not her place to come out and say, like, Alicia, this is what's going on. At the same time, now we're here we are and Alicia's confronting you about it. But you know what? I agree with you in a sense because it's a hard place to be between two people and you don't want to break up a marriage and a family, right? So this is what happens when you get older. It's like, what do you do in these situations? Do you just not say anything? But Renee almost was being mean to Alicia. You know, Alicia's like, did you know? And Renee's like, yeah, I went to lunch with them. And she's like, how many times? And Renee's like, I don't know. Like, bitch, you know. Yeah, but the thing is, she's kind of like, you have the tapes. Why are you asking me? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard because I, 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 I'm I, very, I, I, when I put myself in Alicia's shoes, I'm like, obviously, girl power. Like, you should tell me. I'm, I'm sitting here asking you. I would hope you would have enough respect for me to tell me if you knew my husband was cheating on mm-hmm. me. But then when I put myself in Renee's shoes, it's really none of her goddamn business, you know? Like, it's not. And it's not her place to, as you said, break mm-hmm. up a marriage especially in marriage with children. But she could have talked to Eddie about it if she had a problem with it. Right. Before. She, she could have done that. And also, if Alicia just sat her down and said, did you know, Renee could say, honestly, Alicia, I care about you a lot. Eddie's been my friend forever. I don't feel comfortable talking about this. And I don't I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to have this conversation. So really, this is a conversation you need to have with him. You know what I mean? Instead of being like, I don't know, like she got all defensive about it and and almost angry and it was just like misplaced anger because I think she just didn't know what to say. Yeah, she gets on the defense right away because she's kind of being attacked in a sense. Because I mean, why? it's getting a little extreme with the questions like how many times have you gone out? Who cares how many times? It's not a matter of how many times. You know your husband lied to you about the situation. So, yeah, take it up with your freaking husband. This is the one point I do agree with Renee on because I know she mentions it later on and in, like, upcoming previews. It's not her responsibility. It's an issue in your relationship you guys need to figure out. Like, yeah, she could have brought it to your attention, but at the same time, you don't now, years later, because you're listening to tapes, go to Renee about it. You could tell her you're upset with her. But you don't vent out why you're mad at your husband. Don't trust him. Like, that's an issue you guys need to talk about and fix yourselves. Renee is your friend, and that's all there is to it, not your boyfriend. She doesn't fix your problems. I agree with you, but at the same time, if you think about it, if you've ever been cheated on, like, the first thing you do is you try to figure out, like you're saying, it doesn't matter how many times, but when, when you hear that you've been cheated on, the first thing you think is, like, I need the details. What happened, with who, how many times, where was it? So you can build up this case so that when you do call your husband, when you do call, you're like, I know that this happened. So that there's like, you know, he can't really deny it. Well, you don't even need to do that. You'd be like, I have freaking CDs. Here you go. Listen to them yourself. Right. That's true. But I just think at this point, she's, she's really hurt. She's putting up a front. She's like, I don't care if he slept with anybody. Honey, you obviously care. He's been your husband for 13 years. You have his name tattooed on your wrist. You care. It's okay to care. Of course it's okay to care. Just say you care and then say, I care. So this is why I'm asking. I see both ends, but you ever see, okay, I know we're all as girls familiar with this situation. One, there's a girl and a guy that are together. And let's say the guy does something stupid. But the girl gets mad at the other girl instead yeah. of her boyfriend. That pisses me off so much because you're so damn insecure in your own relationship, you can't confront your own issues. We see that all the time. If a girl, sorry, if a, a boyfriend looks up a girl up and down in the mall, standing next to their girlfriend, and the girlfriend get, gives you the dirty look. Right. Are you freaking kidding me? Right, and it does happen all the time. And I don't know if Alicia's the kind of girl who would get pissed at, yeah, we know she's pissed at Carla, but... Is she the kind of girl who would even get pissed at Renee if she was the messenger? Right. Maybe. We don't know. And it just seems to me that Renee and Alicia aren't that close. 
So, I mean, I know they're on the show together now and they're going to become close, but as of this point, it definitely seems that Renee's closer with Eddie. Yeah, I mean, so that, I would say so, I guess, based on what she was saying. It seems like that's where her loyalty lies. I thought it was interesting that when Alicia found out about the Renee thing, she went to Natalie. Mm-hmm. And they seemed to have a really relaxed rapport about them. It made me seem like there was a deeper friendship there that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. It's just interesting she went to Natalie in a sense because Natalie's younger, right? Based on what we think. Yeah, but they're both in Philly. Maybe she didn't want to drive to Staten Island that day. <laughs> yeah, but you could just call up a friend, right? Instead of going to a funeral home, which is the weirdest thing ever. Honestly, I don't know. You're talking about negative situations in a negative environment. Like, who wants to be in an area with dead bodies talking about, like, your husband may be cheating on you? Yeah, absolutely. So awkward. Absolutely. And I also wonder, for the big picture of the show, how it's going to work that Alicia's waiting to be sentenced right now. Yeah. When does that come? If it comes... Is- and she's obviously off the show. Yeah, what if we lose her as a cast member? We just met her, she gets incarcerated. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't really know what the deal with that is. I think getting sentenced takes a very long time, but I don't really want to get attached to somebody who's going to leave us in half of a season. I wonder if the FBI and, like, people on this case are, like, sitting at home with popcorn watching the show. I know, and I wonder I really if she's wonder. almost using it as a way to prove her innocence. I you, bet you. You know, because she keeps yeah. saying how she had no idea, but I'm a little skeptical. We don't know yet, though, and I do like her as a character, so I'm trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. It's kind of hard, like, especially that this is going to trial. None of those people probably involved can probably watch the show in a sense because I'm sure jury can. You can't be, like, one-sided and oh, have a yeah, biased jury, opinion. You're not yeah. Yeah, and it's do it, everything. it's interesting, and I'm sure that has to do with even when Lee was on trial or whatever it is, or or when Karen was trying to get her dad out of jail. You know, if they watch, then they're tainted. Right. So jury members can't watch, judges can't watch this, and if they, I think, I bet it's illegal. Yeah. Because sure. you you know you develop feelings for these people, and honestly, uh, Sammy the Bull, Karen's father, who is a mass murderer. If you watch the show and you hear Karen talk about it, she makes him seem innocent. Yeah. And that's a huge thing also that I wanted to mention because we didn't get to talk about it last week is this situation going on with Karen and Alicia, how Alicia's father-in-law was murdered by Sammy the Bull, which obviously we're going to hear more about. Um, We don't know where that's going yet, but we know that Alicia says she refuses to be in the same room as Karen, and if she ever is, she'll kill her or whatever it is. Like, it won't be good things. Um, I, I, we know that's going somewhere. Honestly, I'd be scared if I was a producer to put them in the same room, even if it's for a storyline, because, I mean, that's family, that's blood, and when you have a death like that because someone murdered somebody, they're... I mean, I don't yeah, know what I would on do. Television. Yeah, I mean, both of us have lost parents, and if it was to a murder instead of a disease, I think it would be a completely different story. That's and some I don't serious know, revenge stuff. Yeah, that's serious revenge stuff, and I don't think I could be in the same room as someone either. Because, I mean, how, you either break down crying or you do want to murder the person. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I just think that we haven't seen the rest of that story, but I don't know if we're going to actually see it come to a peak because, yeah. as you're saying. That's seriously dangerous. Oh, yeah. It's dangerous. Like, unless they want another trial for another murder, I don't think they want to put those two in the same room together. I thought just going back to that storyline a little bit more, what was really interesting about it was Alicia was pissed at Karen. Uh, Alicia was pissed at Karen because she said, you know what? It's not Karen's fault that that's her dad, but it is her fault that she's proud of that. She should never be proud that her dad is a serial killer. Well, all of these girls are guilty because they're on a show called Mob Wives promoting being in the mob. So, come on. I know. I mean, let's get real here. I know, exactly. So anyway, I think that pretty much covers tonight's episode. All we have left to do is get into some predictions. Yeah. And now, your (laughs) After Buzz TV predictions. Okay, so predictions just for next week and then we'll get into predictions for the season. Uh, of course, we have more of this Renee Alicia thing and uh, Renee talking to some woman that I don't know, saying she's not a rat. And yeah. then we see the dinner and Drita's siding with Alicia, um, which is a little surprising because she's Renee's good friend. But she's like, if you like stop being sneaky, you know, if, if you did this, just say you did it and admit to it. 
or whatnot. Well, she's looking at it from a girl's perspective because she knows what it's like to be cheated on, clearly. So she's like, well, if this was my husband, I would want you to tell me. And Drita uh, and Alicia just had this connection about it. You know, they yeah. were just talking about it at the boardwalk. So I think that Drita really is feeling with uh, Alicia feeling and, and for feeling her, for her. Yeah, yeah f- feeling with her, feeling for her and, and starting to empathize. Right. So I think that she's sticking up for her, which I like, though, because I would be frustrated if nobody had Alicia's back. You know, she's kind of a new girl around the block, and, and we want somebody to stick up for her. And that's where Drita's good, because she's not just siding with somebody due to loyalty of how many years she's known her. She's siding with how she actually feels. Right, which is, which is good, but it's also tricky, because obviously Renee is not going to like that too much. Yep, then there's going to be another fight. And, and Big Ange isn't going to take sides, because... She very She's like does. non-confrontational, I feel like. I know, it's weird. Um, the other thing is we see Natalie and she's fighting with Drita and she calls her a whore. Uh, Drita is the wrong person to mess with, as we talked about before. Yeah. She, out of the bitches, she's the baddest. So, Natalie, you have no idea what you are getting yourself into, honey. Well, uh, my prediction is there might be physical altercation at that bar, wherever they are. And then there's that other issue with it looked like uh, Natalie was with London, her boyfriend, and Renee the, said something like, don't yeah, touch me. Yeah, Renee was pissed about it, and then Renee said like she would snap somebody's head or whatever. Okay, I guess this brings us to predictions for the season. I think we've got a lot of drama, which, unfortunately, 100%. guilty pleasure, I love it. Like, yeah, I couldn't course. be more excited for anything. That's why we're on the show. Right, and the new blood, as we <laughs> said, I think we really need it. Mm-hmm. I think that in the end, Alicia is going to be accepted into the crew and Natalie is not. Yeah, I think Natalie is going to be struggling the whole season to fit in. There's a weird thing with Natalie, too, at the end, actually, where she's talking to somebody. She's like, you're going to choose them over me. Oh, yeah. We don't know who this girl is. It, I, we've, I've never seen her. It almost looked like but... Alicia, but I don't think it was her that she was talking to. No, I don't. It was, she had short hair and a blue shirt. It was like the very last clip. Yeah, so what do you think, though? Do you think Natalie's going to be accepted eventually, or no, you think? No, I think she's going to be struggling the whole season to fit in. She may be accepted by one girl, but then the other three are going to be against her, and then maybe in another week, then the other girls will like her, and then that one that was defending her turned. Okay. It's going to be a constant battle for her. I hope that we see more of uh, the clothing line, because it's really fun to see what they're doing in the makeup line, and I love, as we yeah. said, breaking down the fourth wall and seeing what these women are actually doing and yeah. what's actually going on with them as the celebrities that they are. Right. I mean, I think that's really cool. I'm, I'm interested in the stalker. I yeah, want, I want to know more. I, I love that kind of... Not that I want her to be stalked, because I feel bad for yeah, her, because I freaking love Rita. But anyway, I mean, other than that, any other predictions for the season? No, I just want to agree with you on the stalker thing, and I I want them to talk. I want there to be something more because, I don't know, that's interesting. I know, I agree. (laughs) Well, anyways, thank you for listening and talking with us. As always, of course, keep the conversation going on iTunes, YouTube, rate, comment, subscribe. And, of course, throughout the week, if you want to talk to me, which I hope you do so we can discuss what's going on on the show, you can find me at Roxy Stryer. And you can find me at Gabrielle underscore Loren on Twitter and Gabby LO87 on Instagram. Let us know how you're liking the season and yep. any questions you have or comments you have about tonight's episode. And until next week, same time, same place. Peace. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. What? Buzz, Buzz you later, <laughs> bitches! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.